Hello everyone, it's Melanie. Um, I had a comment on a video today from Susan who mentioned um, the little art piece that I did and wondered if it was going to be in my shop. So I thought I would put one together specifically to use as a printable. Um, so here I'm just kind of, I flipped through a book that I have of Kandinsky. Kandinsky is my absolute favorite artist. Um, and I'm just kind of using it for color inspiration and then for a little bit of shape inspiration. So this is a piece of 140 pound mixed media um, paper, nine by 12, I think. And I have this bobbin case for sewing bobbins that I put some, uh, some of my good watercolors in to use as a travel palette. And I don't really like it, so I'm trying to use up the paints that are in here. So here I'm just working on a background just kind of throwing some color down. I actually did, um, I sprayed the paper uh, with water before um, I started working on it. So it, it um, so the paint just kind of floats on top. And then, and then here I'm just letting it, it was really wet, really saturated. So here I just kind of let the paint run around and, and, uh, and there was still a lot of standing, uh, standing water. So I just, pulled out some of my collage paper um, and used it to sort of sop up some of the standing water. And it worked out well because then I ended up using those little um, bits of paper that I had used as my, as my daubers. So my thought with this, with this collage was that it would be cut up and used as uh, you know fodder for journals so it's not really there's not really a great composition to it I, I wasn't thinking a lot about composition and balance and things like that I was thinking more of just having some interesting areas that you could use you know when you cut it up and, and maybe some parts would look different than others and um, so this is some this is an old some kind of old uh, Xerox map, but I'm just putting some watercolor on it. Um, this is, that's called natural tint. So once I have that coated and dried, I dried it with the blow dryer. Then I just cut some shapes out um, that I'm gonna use to collage on top of my background. So I'm just cutting out random if you, when you cut, I've made a lot of collages like this, and it's funny because you definitely have like your kind of go-to shapes. And for me, that's arches or, you know, half, like half rainbow shapes. Um, I love wonky circles and then teardrops um, or raindrop shapes. And then I cut some straight pieces out. And the Kandinsky piece had, um, some little checkerboard kind of areas so that's what I'm creating here and I like that half that like moon sliver kind of thing that I have there but it kind of looked like a hammer and sickle to me once I got it on there so I was just kept adding stuff on top of it trying to get it to not look like uh, a hammer and sickle from this view those circles kind of look like gray rocks and if you watch what I do I always work in threes um, I think because I was I was an art minor in college and I've had a lot of art training so I always work in odd numbers um, so You'll notice when I like I cut out three teardrop shapes and I cut out you know, three gray circles or you know, that kind of thing. Um, and usually when I use like I use that paint marker, those are Montana acrylic markers. I love those markers. Um, but I kind of I'll use the color at, in three different places on the page at a time. So here I'm just taking one of those 
little scrap pieces that I daubed up some water with and collaging it on. This is um, some of my pro markers, which is an alcohol based marker. And I'm just doing some random doodling. And just like with the cutout shapes, I also kind of have my go to doodle shapes. I love doing, you know, this cross hatch kind of things and the, the little um, raindrop shapes and scallops. I love cutting scallops and doodling scallops. So dots are always easy, circles. This is some more of that um, paper that I had used to clean up that excess water. And I'm just kind of gluing it on at random, cutting some shapes out of it. Those are mostly squares. When I do this, I love to try to use just about everything, you know, all the scraps. That's some acrylic paint, and then I dabbed it on that deli paper and then just kind of um, pressed it down all over the page. So this is just a blue marker, and I'm kind of going through, putting some, putting in some details, and it's kind of over the top. This is, it's got a lot going on. Like I said, the intention is that it would be cut up, you know, so I want there to be something going on, you know, everywhere on it. This is some uh, acrylic ink that I'm using uh, with a nib brush or a nib pen, sorry. So I put some of that on, some little plus, pluses. I like putting those on too. Little raindrops and dots. I love that the acrylic ink is really, really nice. And it, I love putting it on with the nib pen because unlike markers and things like that, it seems like you can use it on top of any other surface um, that you've created, especially when you're doing something like this that's sort of mixed media and there's all you know there's acrylic paint there's watercolor that acrylic ink goes on top of it really well so I'm just putting some details in this is just a black black pen I think when I take it away from the table there, uh, I'm using the blow dryer to blow it, but using painting and doing collage at the same time and having to use the blow dryer to dry things off, you end up blowing all of your scraps of paper. So I have to take it off the table to, um, to use the blow dryer. So I'm just filling in wherever I find some empty space. And then here I'm using a Jelly Roll Metallic and just adding in little bits and pieces, dots and accents, things like that. Here in a second though, my, my pen right there on that very center circle, my pen, the metallic wasn't coming out. The ink was coming out, but it was just clear and kind of made a mess on that center circle there. So in a, in a couple minutes, I'm going to actually put something over that try to mask where it didn't the ink didn't work quite right so just doodling little shapes polka dots scallops so here I try to fix that one that uh, in the center there where the jelly roll ink kind of messed up I'll just add a few more. And 
and then I'm going to go around them with my black pen. more noticeable. I think I missed that one up at the top. So just adding some more bits and pieces. At least I think I add something yeah, down there in the very corner. Here I cut out a bunch of little tiny raindrop shapes and I'm going to glue them kind of all around the page. They're probably hard to see, but I think that when you use the printable, if you use it and, you know, tear it apart and use bits and pieces of it, you know, you may see these little, the little teardrop, the little um, raindrops shapes. So then I made a copy of it, uh, of the finished collage, and I had some tags that I, book text tags that I had sewn up. They just have um, stitching around the outside edge. So I wanted to try the tags and see how they worked. You know, try the collage paper and see how it looked as a tag and tearing it apart and using it in bits and pieces. So. This is just me working on some tags, which I don't do a lot of things like embellish tags. I don't, I'm a little more utilitarian in my journaling. So this is a little out of my comfort zone, but I think they're turning out cute. Um, I like how the collage paper actually looks like the drawing is on the tag. I figure they're going to be, maybe if you would journal on the back of it, I just put some notebook paper on the back of each of them, glued it on there. And then it still felt like it needed something, so I just took one of the markers that I had used and added just a little extra. I think I, yeah, I put some acryl yellow acrylic dots on there too. So that one turned out cute. I think right there I was actually reading the text on that card to make sure that there wasn't something inappropriate <laughs> written on it. That book that I'm using to do my glue stick work on is a, a book I got at the Dollar Tree and the language is terrible in that book. So there was part of this I had to completely cut out because if you had stopped to read the book text, it was not really what I wanted on my channel. So this one I put a bigger piece on the front, smooth it out there with a the card. And then this one I felt like also needed needed something, but I couldn't decide what. And then I thought, oh, some glitter. So I got some glitter washi tape and I just added some embellishment with the um, gold glitter washi. So I added three pieces. I added a little strip and then I cut um, two little circles of gold washi. So there's three spots on the card that have the gold washi. And then for the little ribbon on this one, I just cut a, a little piece of fabric and it's really kind of too short. That was a charm, charm square, so it was only five inches. But the card's kind of tall, so I think it worked out.
So for this last one, I decided um, to put a little craft paint on it. So I put paint on the front and back just with my gift card there. And I do like, one thing I do like about this, using it as a collage piece, you know, and tearing into it and using, is that there's different areas on the sheet that have different colors on them. So there's that teal corner that I used to make a pocket in my journal uh, since I've done this and it, it came out cute. So there's some different, different areas have different different looks. And because those cards have that stitching all around them, I kind of liked having one of the edges completely straight to where it just fit right inside the stitching. So I'm just using those tiny little scraps. I printed this just on regular copy paper, office paper. I'm just kind of playing with the arrangement of it. I decided to tear out that raindrop shape. So here in a second I'm gonna get out a stamp that I carved a couple of years ago um, that's a bird and I put a bird on it just stamp a bird on here and then the bird kind of looked like he was just floating in space so I draw a little branch underneath him to, to ground him just a little bit. But then at the very end, there's a picture of um, the three tags that I ended up with. And I think they turned out, I think they turned out cute. I like how they really do sort of look like, you know, the art's done directly on the tag. And I'll put this little art page as a uh, digital in my Etsy shop. So you can download it and make things to your heart's content. The color in this last photo is not quite right. The color is better there than it is here, but that's what I ended up with. The three tags that I, that I ended up with. So thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next video.